Hello, and welcome to Corvid Coder. This is the show where I code things, and you can watch and learn as I explain it. I am going to continue today with the Game Boy emulator. Um, in the last episode, we went through the first is it 35 pages. No, it says three. Yeah, we went through the first 35 pages of the Game Boy manual. So we're going to start with the special registers, and then Eventually, we'll get to the actual instructions. And when we get to the actual instructions, I'll, I'll probably start coding at that, at that time. And I, I'm pretty sure it's going to be in TypeScript. I kind of toyed around with maybe doing it on Rust, but I'm not so sure. Like Rust with WebAssembly is what I was thinking. So that's where we leave off. We left off just talking about interrupts. So special registers. Uh, these are areas in the memory that you can write to or read from that do specific things in the hardware or in the in the Game Boy software. So the first one that's going to talk about is the IO registers here. So at location FF00, um, register for reading joypad info. So this is to know if they're pressing, no, what is it? It's a little more complicated. The matrix layout for register. Oh, so it's more than just the joypad. Okay, so it's for A, B, star, and select. So they did a matrix. So P10 and P14 are pressed, then right is pressed. If P11 and P14 are pressed, then left is pressed, and so on and so forth. And there's some example code from how it worked in, left, in this pac man. So they checked bit five, select P14, which is this, by setting it low. Wait a few cycles, complement A, so they flip it. Get only first four bytes, swap it, store A and B, select P15 by setting it low. Wait a few more cycles. So I'm not gonna go over this actually, because I'm not gonna be programming the Game Boy, it's not as relevant. So the next register we have is that FF01. Is there a serial transfer? I don't really care about this. Uh, FF02, SIO control. Uh, I assume I don't care about this either. Yeah, FF04. So these are for if you have a cable plugged in between two Game Boys. So you can turn it on and off and then you can transfer stuff between them. FF04 is our divider register. So this register is incremented uh, by 16k times a second, writing any value sets it to zero. So if you try to write to write it, it will go to zero, but it's incremented constantly. And then there's the timer counter. This timer is incremented by a clock frequency specified by the TAC register. So FF07. The timer generates an interrupt when it overflows. So we also have the timer modulo register. And the, we, we talked about these earlier. When the timer modulo register overflows, this data will be loaded. Um, FF07, timer control. So I guess you can turn it on and off using bit number two. And then bits zero and one, you can change how fast it's going to increment. It's weird with the Super Game Boy, like the one plugged into Super Nintendo, operates at a little bit faster of a speed. So let's see, FF0F, interrupt flag. So, bit four is the transition from high to low, pin number P10 through P13. Bit three is serial IO. Two is timer overflow, bit one is LC, D is C, and bit zero is VBuddy. It's interesting how few interrupts there are in the Game Boy. I don't know why I expected more, but it's, it's nice having fewer. Priority and jump address for the above five. I'm going to put this on my other screen so you can monitor it. Okay, so it's good talking more about the interrupts. 
So V Blink has a priority of one. Start address is 40. LCD has a priority of two. 48. Hyper overflow is 50, serial transfer 58, one transfer is complete, and high low is 60. If more than one interrupt occur at the same time, only the interrupt with the highest priority can be acknowledged. When an interrupt is used, a zero should be stored in the IF register before the IE register is set. FF10, NR, sound mode, sweep register. So six through four is how long the sweep happens. Three is if it increases or decreases. Uh, zero through two is the number of sweep shift. So I don't know if this is like the octaves. It looks like it's something similar to the octaves. FF11, so I'll have to look at these at another time. Uh, sound mode register, sound length, wave pattern, duty. So this one you can choose. So here's like a, a different. Oh, so it's PWM. So you have a 12.5, 25, 50, and 75. I imagine 25 and 75 sound exactly the same. Just a flipping of these. Sound mode, one register, and four. So you have the, you have attenuate and amplify, and initial volume limiting. There's a lot of sound, so I'm gonna kind of glance over it for now, or gloss over it for now. Because uh, I'd like to look at it later. It's not something I want to emulate off the bat. Oops. All right, all right, all right. Come on, come on, come on. So there's four voices. So for each one of the voices, you get all of the controls. So here's verse four. So I guess there's a, this is a master value. Yeah, so you have an output level for, oh, you have a, Master volume for each sound. Sound one, sound two. And then selection of sound output terminal. So these are your stereos. Okay, so this is right stereo, left stereo maybe. So you can output the voices either to left and or right. Oh my. So here you can turn on and off the different voices. So here you can store a, a wave pattern, or a sample, more or less. Arbitrary sound data, a sample. Okay, so here we go. So LCDC. So LCD control. So let's see what we can do with that. So this is going to control the screen of our Game Boy. So bit 7. So you can turn off the screen, or you can use the screen. Bit 6. Um, You can choose if the window is shown or not. Oh, wait, what is this? Oh, you're choosing which bank the window chooses from. And then this one, you choose if it's displayed or not. Uh, let's see. So we're choosing the background tile data set. This confuses me. Choosing the background tile map display again. We're choosing the size of our sprites. Eight by eight, I believe, is the most common. We're choosing if the sprites are displayed. And we're choosing if the background and window are displayed. This is a bit weird, but we'll get through it. So stopping LCD operation must be performed during VBlank to work properly. Interesting. VBlank can be confirmed when the value of LY is greater than or equal to 144. So an FF41 is stat. So this is, I guess you read it. This says read write. Read write. I'm assuming the joypad one, if I scroll all the way up, was a read only one. FF41. 
how he's rolled up past all the audio data. Here we go. It says read write. I imagine it's read only though. Okay, let's go back. So much sound stuff. Oh, this looks like I went too far actually. So stat, LCD C status. So it's 633, interrupt selection by LCD status. So six is a Y coincidence, bit five is mode 10, bit four is mode one, bit three is mode zero. You can turn them on or off, I guess. Coincidence flag, mode flag. So you can see if you're we're in H blank, V blank, Searching or transferring. Stat shows the current status of the LCD controller. Mode zero. When the flag is zero, it is the H blank period, and the CPU can access or access the display RAM. Mode one. When the flag is one, it is the V blank period, and the CPU can access the display RAM. Mode ten. When the flag is ten, then the OAMP or the object attribute um, memory is being used. The CPU cannot access OAM during this period. And mode 11. When the flag is 11, both the OAM and display M are being used. The CPU cannot access either during this period. Interesting. The following are typical when using when the display is enabled. So go 0, 0, 0 in mode 1. Can't tell if it's trying to show me a bunch of 1s or 11s. I'm assuming 11s. So it's like nothing and then 11s, mode 2, it's like 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2. Oh, these are decimals. That's confusing. So this is a, a 3, 2, 1, 0. Mode flag goes through the values 0, 2, and 3 at a cycle of about 109 microseconds. 0 is present at about. Oh. So these are the cycles of when these things show up. So I guess if you add all these lines together, you'll have a full line. So it's like 0, and then 2, and then 3, 3, and then 0, and then 2, and then 3, 3. And then that's it. When you're done rendering the screen, now we have a bunch of ones for a while. That's your V-blank. So these threes are your um, Vs. I guess that'd be H-blank. Is two. A complete screen of pressure curves every 70,000 clocks. All right. So FF42, screen Y. Or scroll Y, sorry. Screen Y. So this is the position of the background. Go to screen X, which is the position of the, of the background also. I have an LY. Indicates the vertical line to which the present data is transferred to the LCD chart. Although I can take on any form between 0 and 153, the value. Values between 144 and 153 indicate the V-blank period, writing will reset the counter. So you have an LY compare. Oh, interesting. So you can set this to something, and then a stat will happen when it is equal to this. So DMA is a FF46. So this is a, a large area of memory, I believe, where it's very fast for the it's very fast for reading. So the DMA transfer from an internal ROM or RAM to the OAM can be performed. It takes 160 millise or microseconds for the transfer. Um, Which it details about if you're programming. As can you see by looking at registers by RAM? Example program. Okay, so FF forty seven. Background palette, I believe. Yeah, so background window palette data. So here you can what? Man, I just keep clicking shit.
So you can set the, the palette. So for each one of these, if the pixel that you're looking at is zero, zero, it'll use uh, whatever color is here. Zero, one, it's whatever color is here. So this selects the shade of grays to use for the background and window pixel. Since each pixel uses two bits, the corresponding shade will be selected from here. <laughs> I'm assuming here is this, or one of these, I guess. But you get to choose a shade of gray from zero to three. Or, no, no, it's two bits. Yeah, zero to three. So object palette data. This selects the colors for sprite palette zero. It works exactly as BGB, except for each value of zero is transparent. So here you get to choose between three shades of gray and transparent. Object palette fun data. It's just another one of these. Let's see, dev, or window Y position, window X position, so we can position that window. Uh, so here's talking about the window. Must be less than or equal to 166, uh, blah, blah, blah. Uh, but you could put the window here, and then the rest of this will be background. And then just this part here will be window. These are supposed to be squared off. I guess fonts have changed over the time. Nope, I don't want. What would happen if I did do that? If I did want it, no. Would it like stay there? How does this work? That's kind of cool. Okay. Oh, that's a highlight of it. Uh, uh. So OBG character sprites can still enter the window. None of the window colors are transparent, so any background tiles under the window are hidden. So you can't show background behind this. You can show background behind sprites, though. I believe you can't show sprites on top of the window. So FFF, this is our top register. Interrupt enable. So bit four, transition from high to low, interrupt is just the different interrupts, you can turn them on and off. So now we're gonna to go to the Game Boy Command overview, so forward. Since books on the Z80 are getting harder and harder to find, hopefully the information here might be helpful to those trying to understand assembly language specific to Game Boy. CPU registers. So your CPU has a set of registers that it stores data in and operates on. So this is describing the registers that the Game Boy has. So the Game Boy has instructions and registers similar to the Intel 8080, or these other things. It has eight 8-bit eight registers. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and two 16-bit registers, SP and PC. Some instructions, however, allow you to use registers A, B, C, D, E, H and L as 16-bit registers. So you can do AF, BC, HL, and DE, and those are considered 16-bit, kind of like these are. The F register is indirectly accessible by the programmer and is used to store the results of various math operations. So it's kind of like a flag. Oh, it is a flag. The PC or program counter register points to the next instruction to be executed in the Game Boy memory. So this is just where in memory we currently are executing, and this is where in the stack we are. So there's like a certain amount of memory. Well, depends on the Game Boy game we're running, but there's a notion of a stack pointer that they're gonna be using in memory. And you can store things into it and then get things out of it. That's how jumps work where you can get back to your function. Uh, points to the next instruction to be executed in the Game Boy, the stack pointer register points to the current stack position. So here's how the flag register works. So the four high bits are your, your flags, and then the other four are just zeros, always. So the zero flag, did you do a math operation that resulted in a zero? Then this will be set to one. Subtract, did you do a subtraction? This will be set to one. Half carry, was there a carry of a one from, was there a carry between your 16 bit, like between your four bits on your 16 bit? here to here. If there was, then we're going to set this to one. Someone's playing very loud music outside. Okay, right, so carry flag. Did a carry happen? Like, did we overflow more or less? 
then we will set this to 1. This bit is set if a carry occurred from the last math operation or if register A is smaller value when executing the CP instruction. All right, program counter. On power up, the Game Boy program counter is initialized to 100. And the instruction found at this location in ROM is executed. I don't think that's right. Yeah, that's not right. So it actually starts at zero, goes through the BIOS until it gets here, and then it runs the ROM. The program counter from this point on is controlled indirectly by the program instructions themselves that were generated by the programmer on the ROM card. Stack pointer. A big key to understanding programming is assembly language on the Game Boy, is understanding the concept of a stack pointer. A familiarity with assembly language for other purposes helps greatly as the concepts are the same. The Game Boy stack pointer is used to keep track of the top of the stack, so that's not different from anything else. The stack is used for saving variables, saving return addresses, passing arguments, the subroutines, and various other uses that might be conceived in Visual Programmer. Instructions call, push, and reset all put information onto the stack. Instructions pop, return, and return um, interrupt all take information off the stack. Interrupts put a return address on the stack and remove it at their completion as well. Interesting. As information is put onto the stack, the stack grows downward in RAM. As a result, the stack pointer should always be initialized at the highest location of the RAM space that has been allocated for use by the stack. For instance, if a programmer wishes to locate the stack pointer at the top of low RAM space, C through or C000 through DFFF, he would set the stack pointer he or she to E000, so that's one above this, using the command load to stack pointer. So when, you, when you're incrementing your stack pointer or you're growing it, you grow downwards. You go E000, DFFF, so on and so on, until you get to C000. And if you go above that, that would be a stack overflow. So there's no stack overflow technically in this, because uh, it's not going to raise that exception ever. It'll just let you do it. That's what a stack overflow is. The stack pointer automatically decrements before it puts something onto the stack, so it is perfectly acceptable to assign it a value which points to a memory address which is one location in the past. So E000 is not a part of the stack, however, the one below it is. A Game Boy stack pointer is initialized to FFFE on power up, but a programmer should not rely on this setting and rather should explicitly set its value. Commands. The Game Boy CPU is based on a subset of the Z80 microprocessor. A summary of these commands is given below. So actually, I want to highlight this. So I want to be able to find it really easily. That was not a highlight. Maybe I want to highlight these two. I don't know. So anyways. So let's glance over these real quick and then probably start implementing some of them. So our 8-bit load, so we're going to load a value into our individual B, C, D. Why isn't A included? So we're going to load a six or an 8-bit thing into B, load an 8-bit thing into C. I'm um, assuming there's a special one where it automatically goes into A. Yeah, there is one. So it's probably a, a faster cycle. So this one doesn't tell you how many cycles each one is, but I'm assuming it's a faster cycle than this one. Okay, so load into a register a value. That one, this one's really easy. Let's let's just start. So, actually, don't want that. I want, I want the baby actually. I want this. Let's call it, let's just call it G for now. That's MP. Commit it. So, 
So we're going to use TypeScript. Um, this, these are pretty complicated systems, so having static analysis is, I would not want to do it without static analysis. There's going to be so many bugs that TypeScript will catch for us in this type of system that if we just use JavaScript, it wouldn't. Uh, let's open up Adam here, our existing window. Okay, so let's get TypeScript going. Trying to figure out. No, it should work on the web, not in Node. So I don't really want to test. I want a build, which is going to be TSC, and I want a dev, which is going to be TS or this way, npm run build. Um, watch, and then. I guess we do have a test. It would be light server. So let's npm install light server. So we don't have to mpx it every time. That gets pretty slow. Or a great folder called SPC. Create a folder maybe called static. And it has the called static. Uh, let's create a file called index.html. Let's put HTML in here. Let's call it Game Boy. And then we're going to put a script into here. And I think let's do type module. I think I just want to call it gameboy.js. Yeah, let's just go with that. So there's going to be a file in here called gameboy.ts, and the rest of the stuff is going to go in the source. Actually, we're not going to call it gameboy.js. We're going to call it main. So as you see, installing light server is actually maxing out my CPU. Uh, the virus protection on uh, Windows doesn't really play well with my MPM. So just slows it down. That's okay. We can wait. Just a second, I want a new window. Let's pop up real quick. I was watching GDQ. Okay. Still going. Okay. So I want to name this main, actually. And is JS appropriate here? Yeah, I think JS is appropriate, or TS is appropriate here, because I still want to do static analysis on it. This is going to be main. And then we're going to have a game boy in here. All right. So I don't need to look at that anymore. Don't need to look at that, maybe. So let's do npm run dev and see how that works. We don't have a TS config yet. So TypeScript. I need to create it. TS config.json. TypeScript main. Oh, Bing. Compiler options. So I need, I want to set the module. 
this slash slash module. So it's compiler option. I don't know if it's option or options. I guess options. Maybe I can get, just look at this and get the stuff I need. So it's compiler options. Module is Rias 2015. Uh, strict is true. Uh, source map is true. Remove comments is, well, we'll leave that. Um, no implicit any. And edge. Okay. I want that to be true. Module up file. I guess that might be good. So let's run dev. Okay, so I ran TSC watch, and that is compiling my stuff now. And it's creating source maps, which is what I want. And then on top of that, we need to go back into this folder. Can I call it game boy? NGB. NPM run test. Now open a browser. Yeah, so I'll close it. And we gotta open it over here. Open up a dev tools. Alright, so it's loaded. Let's see if it's doing anything at all. Alright, so we got that all hooked up. Alright, so if we're not ready to go jump into these, we need some. I want to jump back to this thing. I want to go to the top of this file. What is the name of this processor? It's not Z80. Come on. It's got a Game Boy Wikipedia. Uh, yeah, I guess, I guess I'm sure. What processor is in here? It's an LR35902. So I have, a, I have a choice of naming it the LR35902, or I can just call it CPU. I'm kind of tempted just to call it CPU. Uh, so that seems easier. Now I'm going to need an MMU also, because I need to manage the memory. And then we're going to need an LCD or an LCS. Um, Know what LCS is. All right. Um, for now, that's good. Uh, we're going to need, well, actually, we're going to need a sound. I think that's good for now. Oh, cartridge. We need cartridges. Cart. Um, Let's clean this up. So I need to get ignore. I need to get a net, I guess, also. And I need to uh, get ignore node. So I need a typical get ignore for node in here. And then I'm going to add to it star.js, star.js.map. And so it doesn't actually recognize this yet as a project. Deploy coder. Uh, Okay, there we go. So they're still there, they're just grayed out, but it's, it's much, much cleaner. 
don't have to worry about all this noise as much. So let's close out all of this now. Let's open up just main.ts and gameboy.ts and then CPU. So let's describe a CPU. So one of the first things we need are the flags or the registers. So we need these registers here. So also something I want to do is a types. So I want to specify all my types here. So I want to export type. I want to name one called word. And for now, it's just going to be a number or maybe forever. I also want a byte. So those are two types that I'm going to want throughout everything. So import byte word from uh, types.js. And I spell import correctly. Let's get this compiler up. Um, I want to enable my my diagnostics. I miss having little red underlines. Let's see here. Diagnostics. Okay. So that should enable me to make this a little bit larger. And then if I typo something. It just screams at me. Okay. So I'm going to make an interface here. So interface uh, registers. Oh, no. We're going to do export class CPU. And it's going to have uh, registers, which looks like this. So that's going to be a byte, b, or f, byte, b, byte, c, byte, d, byte, e, byte, h, byte, l, byte. Uh, so that's eight. And then we're going to have an sp word and pc. And let me see if I can initialize these real quick. So I need to make it equal to something, which means I really want to pull this out into a interface. Export interface registers. It's just like that. It's a registers. So A zero. F zero, zero, B zero, C zero, D zero, D zero, H zero, L zero, and it's high and low, that's what the H and the stand for. SP zero and PC zero. Okay, so that's the registers. Okay. I feel like I don't need to actually initialize these to zero. I feel like I could just leave them as undefined, but I don't really like undefined. Some instructions, however, allow you to use. Actually, let me look at TypeScript. I think there's a way to say no undefined. Strict null checks. So in strict null checking mode, the null and undefined values are not in the domain of every type. Yeah, so I do want this. Copy. I want that in here. So now nothing can be undefined or null. I have to initialize it. MSI specifically say that it's a part of the type. All right, all right. I almost wonder if I should just, now nah, I'll just make this a little bit shorter. Right? <laughs> Can I, please? Okay, that's good enough. Make this shorter too then. So those are the registers. CPU. 
So until we do refactoring, this is going to be a very, very messy file. And I'm just going to put them all in. Uh, man. How do I do this? So I need an enum of ops. And it's going to be, the first one's going to be load b n. Let's see. Why is it two ends for register and one? Is there a key? What these mean? No. Let me go find out what a 16-bit uh, one. So n might be... Oh, here are the cycles. Eight, four, and four. So these are smaller. Okay. So if it says load a n, I just think it's inconsistent. So I'm going to say load b n, load c n, and this is going to be opcode. Six load C and is opcode OE load D and is equal to opcode sixteen load E and is equal to opcode one E load H and is equal to opcode twenty six load L and is equal to opcode 2e. Okay, so these are our first ones. So we're just going to load values into these registers. So one of the things I want to do, I need a utility. I need a, uh, I need one called should never, I believe. And it takes in a value of never. And it throws, well, for now we'll throw a new error. Should never happen. And the reason why I want to, I need to export it. The reason why I want to do something like this is you can kind of hack at, okay, so. Before we talk about that, I guess we need CPUs execute something or step. So I think I'm going to call step, and it's a function, and it's going to do something. But at the end of the day, it's going to do something like a switch on an opcode. Let's just say the opcode for now is zero. Uh, const up. So let's. Oh, I can. I guess I can hard code it. So import read op also or ops. So ops dot slip up that one. So switch on it. So case where it's ops dot load bn, do this. I don't know why. I always put some calls after breaks. And then there's a default case where it should never. So we can say should never in here and put op into it. That didn't work. Oh, what am I doing wrong? It is never. Or no, it's not. It's not never. Uh, because it knows it's always going to go into here. It will never go into here. If I remove this, will it get my error? It will. So I guess assuming that this can be, let's just say ops. 
then we're just going to say nothing. OK. Let's do another case. Let's do the next one. Let's break it. Let's do the next one. Um, let's put a bunch more in here. So we have B, C, D, E, H, and L. Is there an F? B, C, D, E, H, L. Um, so there's some more that we need to do in here. So const pc equals this dot registers dot pc. We just say get off, I guess. So this we need to load into the MMU for this. So we're kind of ready for this. It's going to be op. There's a type of op equals. It'll be something like this dot MMU. Uh, dot read byte at PC as ops. So right now this doesn't exist, so it's complaining. But if I were to get rid of something like this now, it's not doing what I want. It might just be stopping because it doesn't know what MMU is yet. So let's create an MMU. For now, I'm just going to define read byte. It needs to write a byte at a certain um, word, I believe. So import word from types.js. It should always be relative, I believe. Yeah. So now, whenever I create my CPU, I can create my MU. Or I can provide it really. I think that's really probably a better way to do it. Structure um, MMU of type MMU. And let's say it's, uh, let's just say public for now. I need to import the type MMU. Well, actually, let's not do that. Or no, let, let's do that. <laughs> Uh, so let's import MMU from MMU.js. Oh, and then the MMU actually needs to take in a byte. So um, location, that's a byte. Or a word. Uh, void copying your word to ops. Turns a word. Let's just return one for now. One. So I really want this to be erring right now. Because this should be what's here now. Like there's an unaccounted for. Oh, I have it twice. Uh, let's do it that way. This one, then. I comment out that one. There we go. So now there's an error. So it says, hey, uh, you can't put this into there. So once I put that in, then it's okay with it. So using this weird should never type function where we say there's a never type here means that TypeScript came in here and made sure that this enum I have, I have a case for every single one of those enums. And if I'm missing one, it will, it will know that defaults might not be never, it might be something else and then it will error. Uh, it's kind of a cool feature to get exhaustive checking in TypeScript. It's not perfect. Um, like if you want to return from the switch and things like that, it can get kind of weird. Uh, but for now, this will work. It will tell me an error if I'm missing one of my opcodes. Um, OK, so what should this do? What this should do is this dot registers 
dot b equals this dot nmu dot read by pc plus one. So basically there's a load instruction, which is opcode 06, and then the next byte is the n, and then b is built into the operation. So whatever is in the n, which is at pc plus one, store it into b. Then we're gonna do Oh, how do I want to do this? So let bytes equal zero or one. So this takes one byte, which is not 100% true. So, but we'll work on that later. So let bytes equal one. And then we're going to say bytes plus equals one because there's going to be one more. And then at the end of this, we're going to say this.registers.pc equal or plus equals bytes. So we need to skip over all of the, the bytes of the, the operation we just did. And, and for different ones, there's different amounts of bytes. So this one's a two byte uh, opcode, doesn't actually say here. Um, this one's a, a one byte opcode, for instance. So let's, uh, let's copy these boys down. So let's see. Um, I really need to learn how to use registers in uh, Vim. That would save me a lot of time right now. So we got B, C, D, E, F, oh, not F, H, and L. All right. So we got these ones done. Yay. We're going to want to do cycles eventually. I'm just going to ignore them for now and come back to them later and do them. Uh, one thing that I'm really planning on doing is this order and this order will be the order of this manual. Uh, I feel like if I do it in any other order, there will be a lot of me looking around. The downside is that when I do it in this order, I can't see which opcodes I'm missing potentially. If I go through this like in order, I'm hoping that doesn't matter. We'll see. I can always print these out or like copy them and sort them and see what it looks like. But in the text editor, I want it to be in the same order as this. I might even like put page numbers in here or these descriptions in the comments or something just to like give me or section numbers just to show me where to look. Make it faster. Let's try that. So this is a uh, 2.3.1. So I can just go here and be 2.3.1 and look at them. All right, I think that's that's going to be good for now. I need to start dinner. I got some things to work on. Um, I'll push what I have here up to GitHub. It doesn't do anything obviously yet. However, the code's starting to get put in. Eventually, we'll start having a a loop here that will do it for us. Instead of just typing it in and see if it compiles. Um, but yeah, thanks for watching. Uh, as always, this is Corporate Coder at corporatecoder.com if you want more information. No? Okay. I'll see you later.